Okay, I've got a good question for you now, but um, only because it was you tweeted about this during the week, so I thought <laughs> so I <laughs> that thought, was like if it's the one I think that was the most. So I think I tweeted tweet for a while. I think I'll bring it up, which is uh, on your website. It says that um, you were uh, a day pregnant when you won your um, Ironman UK. Yeah. On, on an interview I've listened to, you said you were 12 hours pregnant, which probably means that you were having sex before you won um, the uh, <laughs> the Ironman UK 2015. I didn't think athletes were allowed to have <laughs> sex the day before an event. Uh, yeah, so did there's, you, there's did, a few things You did, tweet, things you did here. tweet about that, didn't you? I did tweet about <laughs> this, and one, because I read the article and thought this, it was a very scientific article, and I thought, that's interesting. Let's let's make it speak to the... Uh, the, the, the more a larger audience anyway people a few people have commented on that 12 hours versus a day and I think what they took away was I was having so little sex and my during my time as an athlete that I could pinpoint to the hour <laughs> <laughs> when I literally um had had, had sex well, I wouldn't so imagine I, most athletes yeah. were thinking I'm going to do an Ironman tomorrow hey why don't I have some sex before before the, the night before it'd um, be the last thing on most people's minds they'd be, yes they'd be carb loading or something yes that's true I, I think for me there's so the two things let's go back to the tweets so there's a really <laughs> really cool article um <laughs> I follow this guy called Trent Stellingworth who's incredible on Twitter he's a he's an exercise uh, scientist physiologist PhD 100 letters off anyway he tweeted a research article, it was published on PubMed, which basically said, looked at whether sex before an event affects your performance. And the takeaway from it was that it didn't, unless it was really, um, really energetic, multi-orgasmic and in multiple positions, which could cause injury <laughs> risk. So I think for me, it was more like, you know, can I, it was, you know, it was my, with my partner at the time who I was kind of with and wasn't with. And it was, it was more like, can I just, be relaxed, please. And it, you know, it was all over in like 10 well, minutes, just... but it certainly <laughs> didn't tick any of those boxes. So as long as the sex is not good, as long as it's crap sex, you're all right as to have it. As, as prior, long as it's lying down, prior. you know, snuggly sex. All right, then, um, you're all right. <laughs> so I think performance wise for me, it probably boosted it in retrospect. And obviously I've done a lot of thinking about this because I'm a scientist and a doctor. And I was thinking yeah. that hormone surge, because as athletes, you, you exist. One, I did not think I was fertile because the doctors at the time were like, you're 11% body fat. How can you be fertile? Um, I know we've kind of gone off track slightly here, but um, I is didn't... that what happens if you're if you're a uh, if you're doing a lot of endurance athletics as a as um, yes. as, a, as a female, you you become infertile for a while. Um, yes, and again, drops. genes come into it too. There's the you know there's some, certain people maintain periods despite being very low body fat, and what we now know is it's actually not related to body fat per se. It's related to energy sufficiency which is basically, are you feeding and fueling and supporting yourself enough? So there's people that maintain menstrual cycles with very low body fat because they're calm, they're eating enough, they're resting enough. And some people, the caveat to that, could be 20% body fat and not have any periods because they're running high cortisol levels, stress hormone levels. So it's basically a brain perception of stress. When this, the brain perceives there's too much stress, and that can be life, relationships, physical then it shuts down the connection to the ovaries, which means you don't ovulate. So that's a pretty good sign then, that you're not looking after yourself if you're a, if you're a woman and your, your period stop, is it? It's a pretty good sign, yeah. And, it's, and they've redefined it. It used to be called the female athlete triad, and now they're calling it REDS, which is Relative Energy Deficiency Syndrome. Okay. So it's one, to, it's one to pick up on because, you know, it almost used to be sort of this hero trait that mm. you get to a level of, of training so hard and you lose your periods. And um, what we know now is that actually that's detrimental on a number of levels, brain, body, muscle, bone strength, um, mood, all of those things. Sleep causes sleep disruption. Uh, what is the meaning of life? What is the meaning of life? That's the final question for you. <laughs> oh, God, what is the meaning of life? Three warnings here. <laughs> Just rattle it off. Come on. Meaningful connections and relationships. Is that what it's about? Yeah. Okay. Um, where can people follow you if they want to follow you? Um, Sporty Doc on Twitter. Uh, Sporty Doc. And dot Twitter, com. yeah. And we're, we're undergoing a rehash of my, my website to reflect my move away from professional sport because it was. Love it, but it was killing me. So Yeah, um, why did you give up triathlon? Well, one, I had a, had a baby, as, as we now know. And, yeah. uh, and two, then I then tried to come back and, and do it all, run a business, have a child that didn't sleep, um, mostly as a single mum, and run 
uh, yeah, run London Marathon, and I ended up like in not in a particularly good place, getting urine infections, bladder infections, chest infections, and I'm like, I never get sick, and I have all this. So it was my body just saying no. So I stepped right back and. You never get sick. Rarely get. I'm gonna tap that thing like you told me not to. I get <laughs> sick a lot less now because probably because of all the stuff. I've I take. been sick every week this yeah, year. We're gonna sort you out. Every week I've had a cold or something. It I feel miserable. It doesn't help miserable. having naily, gnarly kids <laughs> around, does it? <laughs> uh, everybody else around here is doing the little <laughs> violin signal at me. <laughs>